fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're going to show you how to catch some fish today. So hey guys, this is my weekly report for October 5th. But first I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I've been in the fishing industry for all my life, but I've been in there for 30 years. And I get a lot of my information from local guides, friends, customers, and I'm on the water three or four times a week. So you could actually listen to my reports and they're very accurate. So I put out two videos a week. On Monday, I do a teaching video. And on Wednesday, as you know, I do my reports. So let's get on with this report. So number one, the opening for Pyramid Lake was a very successful uh, opening day. Seems like everybody caught fish. Guys were throwing um, lime and lures, um, throwing spoons. Um, I had a good friend of mine, Blade Runner, um, Rick Teague was up there and he was jigging his spoons. Um, you could watch the video I just released this last Monday, and then I did an interview with Rick. But they slaughtered them. They had fish, they probably caught 50 fish, and they had them up to like 10 or 12 pounds. But everybody caught fish. It, guys that were trolling, jigging guys, everybody seemed to have a good time catching them. So if you want to catch some nice trout, you could head up to Pyramid Lake. So locally around in our lakes, um, I've been going out a lot, been catching a lot of uh, bass. So I did a video this last Monday on how to jig them. Um, in the fall is probably one of the prime times to hit all the lakes because the shad go up in the river arms and spawn and those bass follow them. So it's kind of like easy pickings. But watch the video because I do tell you how to do it really good. Another thing going on in our lakes, well, you could actually catch them drop shotting too, um, but if you learn how to spoon, there's no quicker way than catching them on a spoon. So we went crappie hunting. We found some crappies, but we're telling you with this size, you might as well take up golf. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very early in the year for fishing for crappie. I got this massive one though. That yeah. was a good one. Nice fish. <laughs> Davis shape. Let's get in a little bit of trout. Party is already stocking the lake. Um, they're releasing um, trout. They, I heard they dumped a couple loads already. So if you want to get out there and go trout fishing, I would probably go to Party. Pretty soon, when the weather starts cooling, all the lakes will start releasing them. If you guys want to catch trout, go to Berryessa. And the bite has been really good. And the fish are around 40 to 50 feet. And you want to pull speedy shiners and you want to be, pull, put the set back about 80, 100 feet, and then you want to go about two and a half miles an hour. But uh, Speedy Shiners have been one of the top getters at um, Berryessa. So other things going on locally, um, the uh, Landlock Kings in Folsom slowed down a little bit. Um, they're still catching a few. I saw guys trolling, but I don't know you know, how well they're doing, but I heard it slowed down a little bit. But I think as the weather starts cooling, it'll definitely pick back up. So locally here, guys, salmon are starting to show up, but the water temperature is still too hot. So some of the areas when I was down there, the water temperature has been right at 70, 71. I heard where the American and the feather come in, it's more like 68, 66. A little bit cooler, it needs to be a little bit cooler, but they are catching them. Uh, Jennifer, a friend of mine, was in American throwing flying seas and she caught a nice one, like over 20. And she said she hooked a couple more. Um, I know guys that are um, trolling in a the river, they're starting to pick up a few. Uh, Acosta, Ricky's been catching them, he's been trolling. So I know some guys that have been <coughs> long lining up in the American River. They've been pretty successful and also at the mouth of the feather. The water at the feather drops so low that the island is showing. So you could actually walk out there and then they're, they're lining the, where the water's coming through on both sides. They're also doing it in the Upper American. A lot of guys are coming in the shop and they're showing me all these pictures of all these nice chrome fish. And they're big, they're like 15 to 30 pounds. And they're catching them. So 
you know, if you know how to do that technique or go down there and watch those guys, you could catch them. But they put a limit on the length of the leader. You can only use a six foot leader. So you can't use long leaders there. So one of the things, um, Folsom Lake is five mile an hour now. So if you plan on going there, it's five. So what happens is Folsom, which is the American River, Orville, which is the Feather River. Those, both those lakes are way below capacity. They're way, way down. So they don't have any water to release. So what they do release is just trickling out. So the water temperature is still very high. But the water coming out of those when they release it is actually pretty cool because it's on the bottom of the lake. But, you know, by the time it mixes in with all the water, still a little bit too warm. So hopefully we get some cooler weather and cooler nights and then the fishing should pick up. Let's go outside in the, down in the delta. The bass fishing has been on fire. Um, Dave and Rob caught some nice ones the other day. I was down there with a friend of mine and we caught quite a few fish. Um, not real big ones, you know, but you're getting around 15 pound limits, which is pretty decent for right now. So the bass fishing down there is really good. You could throw spinner baits, which I caught a lot on, and we caught a lot on uh, chatter baits, and also flipping. And we're flipping, you could flip brush hogs or um, D bombs or any of that type of crawdad looking imitation bait. The striper fishing has been pretty good. If you hit the tide right, you could score big time. There's a lot of guys I know that are out there. Uh, if you go out into the Sherman Lake, and you're out there on a high tide, it's very possibility you could have a 30 to 50 fish day. Throw on five inch swim baits, or you throw some um, top water lures, but the five inch swim bait in pearl with the chartreuse tail has been the ticket. And you wanna use a half ounce jig head on there. Trollers, trolling Yozuris, deep diving Yozuris in 15, feet, 15 to 20 feet of water. They're trolling the five or seven inch Yozuri and they're putting a white trick worm on the back. You want to troll with the current and you want to make sure you bump bottom once in a while. And that's one of the things is that if you had a high tide, I would definitely move up shallower. So that would put the deep divers away, go to a shallow runner, put the same trick worm on the back or run a rattle trap. And you want to be in probably six to eight feet of water. And guys, always remember when you're trolling down there to go with the current. And with the rattle trap and the shell runners, you're probably going to be going probably about five miles an hour. So that bite has been good. But the, also the guys fishing inside Liberty Island been catching some nice fish. And they're also throwing the five inch swim baits or swim jig. Swim jigs have been producing pretty good too. And one thing about the swim jig is it has a weed guard on it, so it keeps a lot of the grass. You know, I've always said if you could cast out 10 times and come back clean 10 times, you're going to catch more fish than someone that's always taken off grass off their hook. So that swim jig is a good bait to go to. So guys, I was out the other day and um, we were on the San Juan King River because I got word that there was a lot of stripers here. But as soon as I put the boat in the water, I noticed the water temperature is still 71 degrees. So I kind of had my doubts, but we went out in the San Joaquin and we're starting to graft around on the breaks in 25 to 35 feet of water and I'm seeing fish all over and bait all over. We probably caught over 50 fish but we didn't have one keeper. Like we were in a nursery or something. They're all little guys like this and um, you could have caught as many as you want. So in the San Joaquin I think if you're going to fish the San Joaquin I would go out further by three mile in Antioch, and I think uh, that's where most of those guys are fishing. I came inside because I had a good incoming, but it was no good, all little guys. And it was really windy today. We tried to go out there, but it was too rough. So we opted to come back inside. But we caught a lot of fish, but they're just small. Heading into the bay now, the halibut fishing has been really good. There's a lot of nice quality fish out there, and I think it's a lot because there's not a whole lot of pressure on them but there's a lot of nice ones being caught there. I don't know if the bait receiver is still open. Um, you'd have to call and check, but um, you could use tray bait. It works just as well, halibut are not real picky. You know, they'll usually hit 
trade bait just as they would live stuff. If you go outside when the weather permits, you can fish the North Bar. I think you would get bigger halibut, and, but you know, you can go as weather permits. The salmon fishing out there has slowed down, but there's a lot of big ones out there. You know, you might fish all day and maybe get a fish per rod, but the fish are gonna be in that 20 to 35 pound class. And most of the guys are still doing the same thing, trolling, you know, with the tray bait. If you watch my Bodega Bay ocean salmon, we showed you how to hook that hook in them and put the bends so the bait rotates correctly. And one of the things like if you're trolling and you're seeing the fish on your meter or bait and you're not getting bit, you need to bring it up and try bending it more or less to get the bit, the twirl a little bit different. Because sometimes they like it wide and then sometimes they like it fast. So you have to keep changing up. Just don't keep trolling. That's super hot right now is the rock fishing. You know, during the fall, the lingcod start moving in the shallow because they start to spawn. So you're going to be able to catch the heck out of them in 30 to 60 feet of water. We had a crew go out, um, Danny, Troy, and Nate went out the other day on uh, Steve's boat and um, they slaughtered them. And the lingcods are big. They're, they, those fish look like they were 12 to 25 pounds and they caught the heck out of them. They limit out very easy. And, um, but I've heard from all the guys that are going out there, all the party boats, they're just catching big amounts of lingcod right now. And they also caught a lot of um, big um, red rock cod, the vermilions. They had some nice vermilions too. They look like in the five to eight pound range. So rock fishing, I think, if you want to go out and get a bag load of fish, I think that's what you need to do right now. Either Bodega Bay, Farallons, it's all good because they're all coming in shallow to spawn. So, another thing, heading up north, Fort Bragg, <clears throat> the tuna fishing, the albacore is still, still going good. Just watch the water temperature, make sure that temperature, you know, is in reach of your boat. And then they're um, catching these big eye, they're catching marlin, they're catching dorado, they're catching all kinds of crazy fish. And um, the Zookers have been working good, uh, cedar plugs, and the Mad Max in a small one, which they're hard to find. But the albacore fishing has been good. The fish are in good grade. They're, you know, 10 to 25 pounds. Right now, they've been out about 20 to 30 miles. So just watch that because one of these days, it's gonna, that current's gonna start pushing back out. And then in one night, it could go out more than 10 miles. So then instead of going 30, you're going 40 or 50. And some of these smaller boats, you, you know, your range is not far enough. So my tackle tip for this week, guys, is how to locate fish, jig fish, in a lake. So you could refer to my video that I did this last Monday, but it's so important to be able to Watch that GPS. Basically what I do is when I launch my boat is I turn, I head out and I'm watching my 2D sonar and I'm watching and you're gonna see all the bait fish. It could be trout, could be squawfish, could be bass, could be shad, could be anything, but they're always at a certain depth. Because if you have a high powered sonar, you could see the thermocline, but it's really hard to see. But when you watch and you see where every fish is at a certain depth, so I was at Folsom the other day and they were all at 35 to 45. So that tells me the thermocline is probably at 50 feet because they like to stay right on top of it. If you go below the thermocline, the oxygen contents goes away, so they usually stay right on top of it. So basically that gives me an idea where they're at. So what I do, once I get that, locate that depth, I go to my contour maps and I look at the contours and I find, and I want to find ledges, steep drops. So I go on there and I look on my mapping where those are and I'll go over there and I'll graft it. And when I'm grafting in that deep of water, I always use um, 2D sonar. And then once I locate them, I try to find a bend or somewhere where the fish could trap them and push the bait into that bend and trap them. But basically I'm grafting so if you look at this last Monday's video, 
you're going to learn some stuff about how to jig in those lakes. So guys, after you locate that thermocline and what depth those fish are in, then I show you in that video I just did where to put your boat because it's so important where you put that boat position. If you guys like the contents that we're doing and putting in these videos, hit that like button because it, you know, it gives me a general idea and lets me know that you know, I'm giving you guys information that you could use. Please subscribe because it helps my channel out a lot. You know, it helps me get along further down the road. And on the bottom, you could click that little button and leave me a comment. You can ask me anything on any of the 80 videos that we have out there or whatever, and I will get back to you within two or three days. So I'm glad, hope you like this report, and I'll see you guys next week. Fishing is fun, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today.